Here's our schedule. It's from the bottom up. Okay? From the bottom up. What color are the top ones? Gold. Gold. We're going to continue to get better. And when we hit November, we're going to be peaking. I've been doing this for a long time. About 30 years. There have been times where all I've had is hope. And you know what I'm talking about, your fans. You hope things are going to go well. And I will tell you this, the feel, after all these years I'm getting, it's real, it's happening, and it starts on a Friday night two weeks from now. Get on board, gang, because the buffs are coming. I said it all spring, welcome to the fight. This is a fight. Because life's a fight. You men are ready to fight. It's everything you do, 24-7, 365. One, two, three. Lots of good feelings with this CU squad right now, and I think lots of reasons for excitement. You know, when I look at a team on the rise and I try and give that definition, I think of a team that hasn't been built overnight. I think of a team that has, has set the foundation for success and has built it over three or four years. Things we control, us, we control us. It has experienced players, it has players who know the meaning of leadership, and it has players who Come on, man. hold each other accountable. Let's go. And I think when you look at a team on the rise, it's a team that says we're ready to make that turnaround. They've gone through the fire, they've gone through the adversity, and they're ready to leave a legacy uh, of success that people will look at not just next year, but they're gonna look at 10 years from now and say, that's the team that turned it around. Um, this is from a fan and show you how much it means to different fans. I want to write you and tell you how excited my husband and I are for the coming season. We have both been Buff fans since the day we were born. Went to see you and have continued to cheer for the Buffs ever since. This past March, we were blessed with our first child and we were looking forward to bringing him to watch the first college football game in September. Last October, we went to, to our doctor appointment before they had the kid, okay, to find out if we were going to have a boy or girl. To celebrate, okay, this is pretty interesting. To celebrate last October, we went into Boulder and walked the campus to tell our son all about the team. So I went to the doctor appointment, found out they're having a boy, and they came right here. They walked the campus in the stadium telling their son about you guys. It means a lot to a lot of people, okay? What you guys do means a lot to a lot of people. It's a big, big deal, all right? It's a big deal. Go around, go around, go around. I love it. All right, hustle back to the line. I'm gonna get the ball. As you go into meetings tonight, all right, make sure you're concentrating like we talked about. You'll hear every coach in this room preaching ball security and everything that we do. You know how I'm going to coach. You know how we as an offensive staff are going to coach. We're going to demand a lot out of you, right? The guys that have been here in the spring. I expect that back to you. So I want you guys all to write this down, because this will be a theme. Control the controllables. I want everybody to write that down, OK? Number two, effort. Attitude and effort, first two things, man. 
attitude and effort. We're going to demand great effort from you every single day. If we're not getting it, the coaches are going to let you know. What does accountability mean? You know what it means? Do we trust you? Are you willing to do the things necessary for us to trust you? We put you in the game because we trust you to do the right things. We know you're going to be on time. We know you're going to know your assignment. We know you're going to know your alignment. We know you're going to know your technique. We trust you. If we don't trust you as coaches, we can't put you in the game. Hey, we don't do what to win. Now, okay, watching practice today, all right? We need you to go to another gear. All right, you've heard that before. But you need to go to another gear. That's how you help your team. You kick the guy's ass across from you. It's an individual battle. And if you don't win the individual battle within the play, you let the team down. Now, coaches can inspire you. You know, play hard, hard every snap. They can teach you game plans. So we're talking about getting our hat right down to the midline, knocking them off the ball, okay? They can work with you. Well, you know what? We're gonna win every day. You come out here, you try to win every day. They can kick you in the butt sometimes, okay? But after a while, okay, you don't always hear the coach. There it is! Yes! That's when maturity and how much it means to you as a team and how much you lean on each other. Okay, that's another part of the cement. Do you want to be winners? Little things make all the difference in the world. Everything matters. We can take the cement and put it on there, but if you don't have the ingredients in it, the cement won't stick. So you're the next, you're that part of the cement. And you have to do it through actions. I've said it a lot. Welcome to the fight. It's your fight. It's our fight. But you're in between the white lines. You're in between the white lines in practice. First, 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 first. You're in the middle part away from here. You're in the middle part of the game. You're in the decision making away from here that affects the game. The way you talk to each other, negatively or positively, is part of the scene. Okay, let's go, let's go. One, two, three. It all matters. So the rise, it's you. It's you. When I got here, you know, I, I felt like this Buff Nation was fractured, it was splintered, you know, whatever word you want to use for it. And, you know, one of our first priorities was to bring everybody back together. What went wrong? Where did it go wrong? And, and I've said before, I'm not sure you could point to one thing. I think it's a, it's a perfect negative storm that kind of got it going in the wrong direction. And then a decision that this didn't work out, and that hire didn't work out, and there wasn't chemistry and all the different things that go into it. The facilities was a huge part of all this. but. That's what kind of sent it. And, and as you watch this thing turn now, I don't know if I can point to one specific thing, just like I couldn't say, well, here's where the turning point was for it to go bad. I don't know if there's one specific thing. Sometimes chemistry is a, an obscure, abstract concept. Everybody was mad about different things. And then, you know, Mike's in his first year. I'm in my first year. We don't know each other. Um, you know, he inherits a football team that, frankly, is not very good. And that's not a, a you know saying anything negative towards the team. They just weren't at the level that we needed them to be to compete in this conference at a high level. And I think over time, Mike's done a great job of building this program one block at a time and building the foundation that's so important for long-term success. It's important at, the, at any level of sports, but at the college level where you've got these young men who are kind of in that transitional period of life to have boundaries being set by your peers, I think, begins to change a culture. And again, that, that, that's why this thing is, has got kind of the, the momentum, if you will. 
it's not just because these kids are being accountable for each other. It also tells me that there's some guys that are fed up with losing. Yeah. And yep. they're fed up with how things have gone the last few yep. years. And instead of letting them chase them to another university, they're determined to turn it around. To develop a program from where we were, I like to call it, we kind of, we've kind of risen from the ashes. And um, I would like to say that the way you do that is you develop players. Born from fire, coming out the ashes and just getting hardened. I think of like a blacksmith, you know, hardening a, a piece of metal, hardening a sword. And he's beating it and he's beating it and he keeps heating it up. That's what these guys have in them, a fire that they want to be good. And, and people say it all the time, but I've witnessed it since January. I've been with these guys every single day. Hey, Tim Coleman, where you at? I respect you. You sick as a dog and you out here. Let's go. Work out three, one, two, three. Work. I mean, the talent's here. It's just creating that mindset. It's like I always tell the guys, Ali probably had that persona because it helped him build an overconfidence before he got in the ring. And that's why he beat a lot of fighters. Mike Tyson won a lot of fights before he got in the ring because they just feared that man coming in. I felt like a lot of people that came in my class wanted to be transformational players, players where you come in and you can transform a program. You know, we saw Colorado as an opportunity uh, to be great and to make something that was once great and kind of had a couple of bad years to be great again. There's a different feeling in this camp and it ultimately comes down to the players. You know, I think Coach Max says it best in that um, players make plays and players win games. And we've definitely seen that as a team. You know, it's, it's different because players hold each other accountable. And that, whether that's in the weight room, the locker room, or, you know, obviously on the field, um, there's more of a stressed importance of this season and on plays. And, you know, I, you know, I threw a pick today in practice and, you know, Phil called me out for it and said, well, I have to be better. And it's things like that that we haven't had in the past. You know, guys would just, you know, look the other way and be like, OK, let's get the next one. But, you know, it just stresses the importance of how every play is important and how important this season is to guys, especially the seniors who only have one season left and, you know, just want to go out on top and, and win every game that we have left. The thing that we hang our hat on all the time, it's the pride and tradition of the Colorado Buffaloes will not be entrusted to the timid or the weak. I mean, if you want to step up and have the kind of program that we've had, that we've historically had here uh, at the University of Colorado, it's time to step up. And that's why the rise is real. And that's why it's important for everybody to understand we want to compete for and win championships in the Conference of Cham Champions in the Pac-12. There's, there's a higher standard that everyone's being held to from the coaches and from teammates. You you make the wrong read, you make the wrong mistake, you're liable to be yelled at by any teammate. You know, I, I heard a story very quickly here. We're sitting here with one of the team leaders, George Frazier, and uh, with a new strength coach coming in. And there's a story that came out of this summer where those guys kind of police themselves, Yep. you know, because the, the regular coaching staff's not allowed. And, and the story went, that uh, there was a couple of guys who had some conditioning going on and a couple of guys showed up late for the meeting. Strength coach didn't have a chance to say anything. The seniors met the guys coming in the door and told them to turn around and get out. We don't we don't take guys showing up late. You're on this team, you get here on time. You then and laid out the penalty for those guys for being late. And kind of the message that reverberated through the coaching staff was this thing has changed because this team has taken ownership of itself at this point. And and I think that that's an important, I think, moment in this program. I mean, you know, talk to anybody on, on any college team. It's a little bit different in the NFL. Any college team, when, when you get a team that takes ownership of itself and, and starts policing itself and doing those kind of things, that to me is a turning point. Not that you didn't have fine individuals on previous teams here, but that says something about where these guys are, how they view this thing. They've taken ownership of it. They're taking responsibility for it and holding each other accountable. And I think that that's a great statement. And, and that's why, you know, you talk about the different reasons why, you know, Darian Hagan or Mike McIntyre or whoever we talked to, Jim Levitt or whoever walked through here and they're feeling good about this season. That's why I've, I've gone on record many times already talking about why I think this thing has got a different feel and why I'm feeling so optimistic. Being an observer as a guy that calls the games over the last 12 years, why this thing is different right now in 2016 than it has been in previous years. You really develop character through adversity. You don't um, develop character through prosperity. You know, prosperity a lot of times leads to demise if it happens too fast for you, if you don't have a foundation, if you haven't been through some tough times and don't take things for granted. Where are we gonna go from here? Yes, sir. Coach Ooh. always says Woo! the good teams, they persevere through adversity, all right? Let's go. 
Let's, let's get this. I want to be the best team. Let's go. Let's go. Wait on two. One, two. Wait. And you, you see it within teams. You see it within organizations. You don't know where it comes from or why it happens, but you kind of get the right combination of people in place and circumstances, and then things begin to fall. It picks up momentum. That's where I think this thing is at right now. You get young men to buy in and you get coaches to buy in and the whole our whole football community, our whole program of our university to buy in. Everybody has to believe in the direction that we're going, not just on the football team, but all the support groups, our staff, our community. Everybody's got to believe in the same things, got to be going in the same direction, and I feel like we have that. For the first time that I've been here with this program that, you know, there's this confidence around this team, and I think it's the senior leadership that we have. It's the maturity in our coaches. It's the direction that we're heading, and I think everybody feels it, and uh, it's fun. going to continue to get better and when we hit November we're going to be peaking 
Because they remember what you do in November. Three of our last four are at home in November. One of them was on national television on a Thursday night. Now, there's 12 teams on there, right? What's the most important team on that schedule? What's the most important team on that schedule? Us. The one right there at the top. That's the most important team on that schedule. The University of Colorado. That's you. That's you. It doesn't matter which one I freaking peel off. It doesn't matter. You matter. You dictate it. Not when we're all excited running out behind Ralphie. That's not what dictates it. Today's special team meeting dictates it. Today's offensive meeting dictates it. Today's defensive meeting dictates it. There's a championship football team sitting in here that's going to keep getting better and keep believing in each other. You dictate it. You dictate it when we go out to the walkthrough. You dictate it on how you come in here prepared. It's you. We've had camp. We've got prepared. It starts today. It starts today. Is everybody clear? Sure. Let's go have a phenomenal season. One that when you're 75, you'll call each other. Or what's going to happen, you'll be standing at each other's funeral. You only got one life, man. You only got one life. Why don't you give it all at what you got? You've been blessed. Give it all at what you got right now. Give it all at what you got right now. Every role matters.